Hello, welcome back to my Ford Transit Market Gamfan build and this time it's a rather exciting episode because we're going to start off with the 12 volt electrics for the van. Um, so just before I go ahead and do it, this is not going to be a how-to video, this is just going to be showing you what I'm doing and depending where you are in the world, if you want to copy anything I'm doing, make sure you check your own country's sort of electrical regulations for vehicles and caravans and so on because they can be quite different from different countries. So I've gone for two 95 amp hour batteries. Uh, I'm going to run those uh, blend together into a battery bank which will give you about 100 and 190 amp hours of power. With AGM batteries, only about 50% of that, or the di uh, depth of discharge rate, is about 50%. So I can only use about, well, about half of that, so about then, about 95 amp hours worth of, of it with two. If you had lithium, which one of the advantages, you could discharge about 80% of its sort of capacity. Uh, these are quite heavy, these are about 25 kilos each and I've just gone for the British company Halford uh, batteries because they're home brand batteries are just a rebranded medium grade brand and for the price which they are they're, they're quite cost effective. Right so first I'm going to get a mounting system for these and get these all mounted down to the van securely. So for really good videos on all about how these electrics work, um, I recommend Greg Werber's channel. Um, he's got a great series on loads and loads of parts of camper van builds, including um, the 12 volt batteries. I'm going and I'm going to be just operating in the best practice from, from what I've learned online. Hopefully that's going to be good, um, but feel free to bring up any points you see. So if I'm mounting these down, I've just built sort of a little frame, a different frame. And I'm just going to screw that down straight through the floor into the structural 18mm ply below. When it comes to electrics and vans, you've got two sorts. You've got your DC or your 12 volt, or some of the vans in some parts of the world they might prefer using 24 volt. And then you've got your mains or your 230 or 240 volt if you're in the UK, which is your, your standard wall socket in your house. I'm going to base most of the system around 12 volt. And the reason is for that, it's also what the van runs on itself. And, but I'm also going to have an inverter which converts 12 volt um, into sort of your standard mains which you have in your house in the UK of uh, 123, uh, 230, 240 volt. But for this point, I'm just going to be looking at um, the 12 volt. And the point of this video is I'm just going to want to set up a simple circuit of getting in one full circuit and wiring in one appliance. And other videos will look at the different charging methods and how I'm going to keep these batteries charged up. Because at the minute, uh, there's nothing charged in these batteries, so nothing is going to be using, uh, replacing the power that I take from them. So something I learned about 12 volt when actually learning about the 12 volt was 12 volt isn't always 12 volt. 12 volt is anywhere uh, ranging from 11 volts, which could be if your batteries are really depleted, all the way up to sort of 14.4 volts. That's still under 12 volt electrics. Um, and that voltage is, correlates to the charge rate of your battery. So if your batteries are fully charged, it could be showing somewhere about 14 volts. Um, and if they're discharged, it might actually be the 12 volt area, or if it's really, really discharged uh, to an amount where you're damaging these batteries, it could be the sort of high 11 volts, uh, or even lower. So what I'm gonna try and achieve today is to wire up these um, together in parallel. So it's keeping the 12 volts the same, Increasing the increasing the amp hours, uh, and then connecting together my range of wires. I've got 25 um, millimeter squared millimeter wire and 16, and a variety of fuses and lugs to go on the end of those. With the plan being the positives are going to go to a bus bar here, where other bits and mobs like my electrical charger and my DC charger are going to join it. And the negative bus bar will be back here. And back here is where all my conduit is. So I've got conduit all the way around the van, which all leads back to this point. So the wires will be nicely hidden. So it's really important to have an electrical system planned and laid out in your van build. Um, so earlier on, I made an electrical diagram, which is, shows sort of the plan of my layout, um, which looks quite complicated here. And it is if you try and look at it in, in a hole and I will be releasing this so people can have a look at it as well but for the purpose of today I made a very simple one for what I just want to achieve today just laid out on paper showing the wire thicknesses I need to do where the fuses are 
and what size the lugs are for the terminals. So that's just my wiring diagram to work in a small little part today and then from there I can build on to the, the bigger one. And I bought a selection of M10 terminals to go on these. So just in case you were looking at buying these yourself, um, positive and negative on batteries are slightly different sizes so you can't just buy four of them you've got to buy two positive you've got to buy negative ones and positive ones so we're going to get those on so a lot of this is new to me and the first thing I'm going to do is make the battery cables which join these two together so I'm going to be joining the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative and that's going to be them running in parallel which will mean it will be 12 volt but 190 amp hours. If I was to do positive to negative to, ne to negative, or a negative to positive, that would be in series, and that would mean it would be 24 volts, but still 95 amp hours. So when when doing the battery cables, it's really important to make sure that your lengths between your positive, the positive and the positive, and the negative are the, are the same. So I'm going to measure these out and cut them to be the exact same length, both the negative. And the positive wire, or oh, way around. And I'm going to be using the 25 uh, millimeter squared um, flex cable for it. So for all the cables I'm using in the van, I'm using uh, cables with lots and lots and lots of cores. In your house circuit, they might be solid cores, so be one copper. Whilst if you're um, doing in a vehicle, instead you'll have it's best to use wires which have lots and lots of multiple cores opposed to one. Uh, the reason you do that is because these wires are going to be flexing and vibrating in a vehicle over time. What can happen is uh, with copper over time if it flex continually the, the copper itself will harden and then it will, um, then it will potentially crack and split and if it splits then it's broke up in your cable. If it happens, to go, if it happens just with one strand then you've still got all the other strands in your wire and uh, carrying on. So uh, to do this I have not done lugs or terminals like this before so I've got a range of uh, millimeter for different millimeter cables and for different bolt sizes for different applications and I've just bought off Amazon a, uh, a lug crimper. So I'm going to start off with something easy on some of the smaller cables where if I make a mistake it's not the end of the world I can, I can just do it again. To cut them, I've not bought any special tool, I've actually just gone for some of the garden shears which seems to do a pretty sufficient job at cutting them. So I just need to take a little bit off the end of around the sheath so I can slot it in there and then crimp them together. To do that I'm just going to be using um, just a Stanley knife just to cut through, just to make making sure I don't cut through any of the strands on the inside. So I do have auto wire strippers, uh, but they just it won't do up to this size. So that's nice and down to the end of the lug. And then I've set my crimper to 25 mil cable. Looks like it's made a really good connection and I'm just going to do a second one further down. Doesn't feel like it's going anywhere. Right, one done. To the other end. Nice secure connection. And to finish them off we're just going to use some heat shrink. Right, let's get started on the black one. So, 45 centimetres. I think it's really important when you get to your, uh, your stage you build when you're going to do your electrics is try and order everything beforehand because there's a lot of things to order and just things take time to come. So I've got to have like terminals for 16mm, 25mm and then I've got to have them for M6 bolts, M8 bolts, M10 bolts 
found it really useful to plan out my electrical diagram and then plan out all those wire thicknesses between uh, and all those bolt sizes. So just like how in your house all your items are fused, everything in this system is going to be fused as well. So I've got that switch fuse box up the top which I'll show you later on which fuses all the individual items but I also need to have fuses coming from the batteries and different appliances. So I'm going to use these inline fuse holders together and use what's called MIDI fuses which will fit in there joining those two together. So I've just gone for a 125 amp fuse at the minute because I can't see anything which would draw more than that at this moment in time. But the main purpose of fuses is not so much to protect the, uh, the appliance, it's to protect the wires. So you want the fuse to burn out and break before your wire burns out and breaks. Um, so I'm going to be doing it as close as I possibly can to the batteries, which means if anything tried to draw an excess amount of power because there was a fault, um, it would potentially start to damage a really small section of wire before the fuse would go. You will see lots of people using breakers as well, but because I'm not entirely sure about the overall amp the fuses I need, I've just gone for uh, these fuses which are about one or two pounds each. And then if I want it, if I need to up it in the future, I can do that. A breaker is just like a resettable fuse, although they do take slightly longer to go before the actual disposable fuse would go. So, I'm just going to install the, the fuse. Right, it's a few days later and I've had a delivery from uh, simplysplitcharge.com of all the connectors I'm missing. So I'm back at home and I can start working and finishing off the 12 volt system. But today I've got fellow Ford Transit and van life person Chaz with me and his Transit camper van. Which he was converting as well at the minute. I've just been helping him today to install a CTEC battery to battery and solar controller in his vehicle whilst I waited for the postman to come with my new bits so I can get started on mine. So this is my electrical cupboard uh, and I'm going to mount in here sort of most of the systems. So you're going to have the, char the battery charger, the uh, solar charger and a few other bits and bobs. Uh, I'm going to have two of these four stud bus bars mounted here, one for positive, one for negative. So the negative is going to come up from the battery join here, and then when I have the battery to battery charger in and the solar charger, their negatives can go into here. And then I've currently got the positive from the main, from the battery going up through here, and then go into here, and then I'll, that's where the positives uh, for the battery to battery charger and um, solar controller will go into. This isn't going to be the final visual appearance, but I'm going to get everything sort of mocked up, mounted in now, in rough positions, and then and at the end I'm probably going to redo it in a far neater looking system. It's my Stanley knife over there, Chaz. I don't know why it's over here. So it's going to be a bit hard to see, but I'm going to put my negative bus bar, where all my negatives are going to go, it's going to be sighted up here, so they can all run out of those holes into here, and all the positives are going to go into there, onto the back of there. So one of the things I've talked a little bit about is voltage drop, which effectively means longer your cable, um, more the voltage, that 12.8 could drop to 12.2 um, due to the length of the cable and that's because of the resistance in the cable. One of the ways um, you, can, you can deal with that is either do shorter runs, shorter cable, less resistance, or if you do a larger cable, as in a thicker diameter cable, say from 60 mil going up to 25 mil, that there's less resistance in the cable because the cable is heating up less, so the voltage is dropped. And what I'm not happy with at the minute, because I've got this big cable running up here to this switch, and down again and then it's going to need to go up again for the other one that's I'm adding like an extra few meters 
of cable run where it's not really necessary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go buy another isolator to have my overall battery to the main positive bus bar isolator in this cupboard. And then the three up here will be um, still the battery to battery charger isolator because that cable is going to come into the cupboard anyway from the conduit at the back. Uh, that's still going to be the solar isolator and this one is going to be sort of the, the fuse box slash switch box isolator or appliance isolator. So I could turn all of those off and then have a isolate, another isolator here for the overall batteries to the system because it's a shorter run and it's going to decrease the inefficiencies in the system by making the cable run shorter overall. So we need to wait for a new isolator switch to arrive but whilst I'm doing that I can sort out some of the other bits of wiring in the system. Yeah, so I just a lot of this is just me which is wiring and doing co co connections at the minute. Uh, so it's not the most interesting of content. So it's a few days later and I needed to um, figure out a way to make my electrical board system. So I've drawn out um, sort of what my electrical cupboard's going to look like with my um, solar controller, my battery to battery charger, my isolators, my fuse, my major fuses and my bus bars. And then I'm just going to build it onto this um, board which slots into that cupboard area. So this is my Victron DC to DC charger and this is my Victron solar charger. I'll talk more about the DC to DC charger in a video where I install that and get it up and running and I'll talk more about the solar when I install that. This video is more just about connecting the batteries all up into a circuit um, and, put it, and adding an appliance which is going to be the fan in this case and get that running. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to screw this together and start wiring it all up. I'm going to start assembling the, the electrical board. This will probably be the final layout. I'm going to cut the wires to length but visually it probably won't be the ending. I'll, nicely cable tie all the wires and I'll probably put a black background on it or something. Um, but at the minute I'm just trying to get this assembled so I can get it mounted and get the electrical system working. Because these sit quite high I am just bending the, uh, the lug a little bit just so it fits in nicely. Right, first set of cables done. Pretty happy with that, if I'm honest. So these are my little fuse boxes, and this one's going to fuse from the positive out from here into this one here. So let's get that one wired up. I think a little recommendation if you're doing electrics, uh, regarding all the little lugs, is opposed to counting out your system and being like, oh, I need. Ten, only three of these ones and six of these ones. On, to, on split charge, um, simply splitcharge.com, to buy them individually, 50p in packs of ten is about four pound. So I'd probably recommend just going finding the ones you generally need and then ordering um, packs of ten. Especially if it's your first time doing it, chances are you might have miscalculated somewhere, and then you don't have, don't have to wait a couple of days for delivery to come. So my understanding on how these ones work is you just strip the end of the wire as, I was, as if I was going to put a lug on it, but instead just insert it. Right, I can put my fuse in here as well. This is a 30 amp charger, so I'm going to put in, I can't remember my the fuse while I ordered, see? I think it was a, a 50 amp fuse because that was the nearest size I had, they had, I could order. But these are 16 millimeter wires, so they are rated up to 110 amps. One done. So I think what I'll probably do is I'll tightly do all these wires up towards the end. So 
so this line here is going to be the bottom of the cabinet, so you're not going to be able to see the wires which hang down a bit further. And I'm going to do a little bit of cable management to neaten it up. PV is for when I put the panels in, so that's going to be the positive and the negative from the solar panels. And input from this is going to be the positive and negative from the starter battery, the main battery of the van. So I'm just going to do a bit of cable management just to neaten up these. I think using some cable ties. So this is a 60 amp charger, so I'm going to put my 8 and 80 amp fuse in here. I just can't find where I, uh, I left them. So at the minute, just to make my sort of neat cable management, I'm using uh, cable ties. So just put the hole through, threading it around. Overall, pretty happy with that. So this will probably be no means the final way I mount this, but just for now, uh, to get it in, I'm just going to mount it this way. All right, let's get some of the different bits in. So this cable is the main positive leading to the fused switch box. This one is the, uh, what is this? <laughs> This is the main negative to the main negative bus bar for all, most appliances. This is the main uh, negative to the battery terminal. So, it's time to get these all wired up. So we're going to be wiring the batteries in parallel. If I was wiring them in series, it would double the voltage, so it would be 12 plus 12 would equal 24 volts, That's not, uh, but still be 95 amp hours. I'm going to wire them in parallel because I want to keep it 12 volts but double the amp hours. So that's going to make it, still make it 12 volt, make it a 190 amp hours. To do that, we're just going to combine the positive and the positive and the negative and the negative of the, of the batteries together. So this putting this one in is going to be the positive from this battery and the negative from this battery. The reason that's important is if you just did the positive and negative from this battery but still had these parallel cables, most of the energy is going to be pulled out of or put into when charging one battery and a small amount on the other battery. Doing it this way where you've got the positive on one battery and the negative on the other means the power is being taken out equally through both batteries and that's important. Right, I'm going to test with a, a voltmeter that this is still 12 volt, just to make sure I didn't do something horrifically wrong. So it's still 12 volt. Right, well, all being well, I don't have a voltmeter in, so I can't. There's nothing actually wired into the system. So if I turn it on, it's not going to do anything. When I flick this switch, um, both the DC to DC charger and the um, solar controller should power up. And in the instructions for both of these, it mentions that you should power them up before you attach either the the, bat the second the the starter battery or the panels. So all being well, I should flick this, and hopefully some light should light up. Well. Something flashed, nothing happened. Let's just do a test there and there. So that's live, okay. So I'm gonna wire up the uh, the Max fan um, finally. And all I need to do that is just put a few connections on the end of this. So what I'm doing there is I'm using heat shrink terminals. So I heat up with a glue gun after I've crimped it on. 
and the plastic sort of shrinks and and melts and forms a really tight tight grip on it and then it's going to screw it into the negative bus bar up there one of the most useful tools for this automatic wire stripper another very useful tool is a ratchet crimper although if you buy a ratchet crimper make sure you buy the right type because you can buy insulated terminal ratchet crimpers um, heat shrink ratchet crimpers which is what these ones are and you can also get steel cable ones I, I by accident bought the wrong one to begin with effectively the wiring for this post you see a lot of people having um, fuse boxes and I've got sort of a fused switch panel instead so it's going to act as a fuse box so each one of these switches is fused behind this little black cover is the fuse itself so I plug uh, the positive from the appliance into the back of the switch that's going through the fuse and that goes back to the main positive which then goes back to the main positive buzz bar completing the circuit so the I'm pretty sure that the uh, Max Head Deluxe Fan needs a 5 amp fuse that's what's in there at the minute so I'm about to test it all being well I should be able to fit, flick the main battery positive Flip the centre one of these, which should make this go live, and then test the fan out. So let's have a go. That's live. Solar charge is bleeping. No power to this just yet. So if I go turn that. Now if I hit the appliance switch, that's worked. And let's go. Right, all being well, if I hit this main switch, it should kill it. Cool, turn it off, turn it off. Right, well, that pretty much finishes this video. Um, and this is my first time doing 12 volt electrics, but I'm really happy with how it's turned out. Uh, next time, uh, we'll talk about electrics for the van. I'm probably going to be installing the Victron DC to DC charger. Um, but yeah, once again, thank you for joining me. Uh, feel free to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.